Hi there, welcome back. I showed you in another video how you can virtually build your extension or garden remote building and here I'll show you how I figured out the correct sizes of these floor, wall and ceiling timbers. I'll also show you some lovely hacks to get your spans beyond three meters to get the maximum size of garden or outbuilding room. So let's jump into it. We need sizes for our floor joists, wall studs and roof joists. If we were doing a pitched roof project, we'd be looking at rafters instead of roof joists. Right, that's the jargon out of the way. We've sketched the footprint of our project using a site plan of our garden to calculate the maximum size. These dimensions will give us our maximum spans, which is the key ingredient. Let's start with our floor joists. I'm going to use span tables to help me. Uh, there's a few sites that are great for that. I'm using this one, free to use as long as you stick to their generic tables, which is fine for us. I'll leave a link in the description. Now we need our four ingredients to get our timber size. First ingredient, the span of our joists, as we already mentioned. Second ingredient, we then need our loading. Third ingredient, our joist centers. And number four, our, and finally, our timber strength. Let's go through the process and figure out our options. So first we need to get our span and using the site plan I created, let's get the short span. Uh, I'll form a ground floor frame by doubling up my chosen joist along with the central spine to half the span for the joist as I want the floor to be rock solid with no danger of any bounce from furniture and traffic. So the shorter the span, the better. My foundations will have to run, run along these three lines and I'll make a separate video on options for foundations. Now for our loading. These tables allow for what is called an imposed load, 1.5 kilonewtons per meter squared, which allows for a limited amount of people moving about within the room. Furniture such as sofa, cabinets, TVs, and I've heard this called a live load before. If I had something really heavy in there, like maybe a pool table or something, I might go for the next loading up. We just need to choose our dead load. I'll probably go for a 0.5 dead load per square meter, which allows for the weight of the structure itself. For our centers, I'll use a typical insulation sheet size to help me. I can divide a 1200 uh, sheet into three times 400 millimeter slices, so avoid avoiding a load of waste. So our centers will be 400 plus the thickness of the timber, so that's 440 millimeters of our centers. On to our strength. Timber is graded into strength classes called C16 or C24. They both look the same, but C24 will span a bit further and costs a little bit more as a result. From our plan, our maximum floor span is three meters divided by two, so 1500 millimeters, and then minus 45 millimeters for our central spine. So that gives us 1455 millimeters as our span. And if we look at the chart, C16 just isn't enough this time as we only get 1388 millimeters. Uh, we see that 95 by 44 by C24 gives 1662 millimeters. And this is the smallest size we can get away with using these, dimen these timber dimensions. By all means use a deeper size, which could mean you won't need the central supports, but our aim here is to use as small a section as possible as our starting point in order to keep our overall height down. Now onto the timber studs to make our walls, which will support the roof. To calculate these wall stud sizes exactly, there are a load of calculations, including something called slenderness ratio. Uh, the things to consider are height instead of span, loading, centers of studs, and strength class of timber. Uh, as the free setting in this table only allows for a one meter high wall, only you'll have to pay to, for the subscription if you want to calculate a stud for a typical story of around 2.5 meters height. However, it's very likely that you will be like me in terms of your sizing needs. And in this case, I'm going for 89 by 38 CLS wall studs, which conveniently are exactly the width of our doubled up floor frame carrying the joists. 
This weird size is a timber standard called CLS and is used extensively by house builders using timber frame construction throughout the UK for loads of houses even though they look from the outside like they were built from brick and they are using this 89mm size so it will be fine for our purposes for a small house extension or outbuilding. You could also consider using 145mm studs for your walls which although might be a little bit overstructured for your purposes it does allow for a deeper insulation and additional space for services such as if you are running water pipes through the walls in your project for my roof joists being the biggest span but not so worried about bounce without furniture or regular traffic let's go through the same process as the floor joists so back to our four ingredients span our loading our joist centers and our timber strength. Our span is three meters. We don't have an imposed load for the roof provided there's no permanent access such as a fixed ladder and that access is limited to maintenance of the roof for example. You do get some decent falls of snow in many parts of the UK so let's allow a medium load of 0.5. As we have insulation between these roof joists, just like uh, as the floor joists, we'll again make the centres the same, being 400 plus the thickness of the joists. For the strength, let's start at C16 and the smallest depth we can sensibly achieve is 120 millimetres, but unfortunately these are 72 millimetres thick. 120 by 72 by C16 at 450 centres gives a maximum span of 3032 millimetres from our charts. Now, I can't buy 72 millimetres thick timbers from my local merchants, but I can get 44 millimetre thick ones. So let's just double up the joist to 88 millimetres to form an equivalent by putting some glue along the beam, clamping and gluing them together, and then keeping that clamp firm by adding coach bolts along its length at, um, well, let's say 200 millimetre centres. And here we have our final roof joist structure. 90 millimetre insulation will give us a ventilated space of 30 millimetres. For a cold roof, if we use soffit vents, 50 millimetres is preferred. Uh, or you can put the insulation hard up to the underside of the roof deck if you're understanding about how occupancy can affect condensation. Of course, if I didn't have to worry about keeping below 2.5 metres heights for permitted development, I'd go for a 145 millimetre joist as I wouldn't have to double it up. And I'd also consider sticking the insulation on top rather than between to form a warm roof. Now normally I would recommend you should get a structural engineer to calculate these sizes for you but the whole point of building small home extensions and garden rooms under the size of uh, permitted development is that for many situations your project will be exempt from building regulations and therefore it's no longer obligatory to get a structural engineer. For the thorny topic of insulation with a flat roof and warm roof versus cold roof versus hybrid roof see my other video here. Now we have our floor, wall and roof timbers and our centres and now it's time to design the layout of our room and start the build. I have a video on how you can do just that so check that out using the link and I'll see you in the next one.